Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So if you watched my last video, you'll know that I went to New York City for the weekend, or you know, a long weekend, because we left on the Friday and then we came back on the Tuesday. So I figured I would share with you what I picked up in New York. I didn't really go overboard with shopping this time around just because, you know, trying to stay within budget, but really the focus of this trip was to just get out of the city, but also go and eat amazing food in Manhattan. So either way, like I'm not going to go to New York and not buy anything. So if you're interested in seeing what I picked up, then keep watching. So in terms of beauty, I didn't really go too crazy, like I said. We went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, or also known as the Met, and they had a special exhibit called Manus Ex Machina. So it basically just showed the pieces that are created in fashion with the use of technology and different techniques. So in their little gift shop, I noticed that they had Cirque Colors nail polishes, which we I don't think we have here in Canada. So they had a special collection made just for the Met, and it's in collaboration with Olivia Kim, and clearly I'm uncultured because I don't really know who that is. But uh, yeah, so I picked up two of the nail polishes that were made specifically for the exhibit. And so I picked up this shade Moon Dust, which is like a very glittery silver. And then I also got this color Raven, which I don't know if you can see it, sort of... Maybe I'll take it out of the box. Yeah, Raven is the one I was actually drawn to first just because I don't actually have any duochromes in my collection. So it's sort of that, like, it's showing up gray, but it's mostly green. Yeah, there we go. So it's a green duochrome with, like, flecks of, I guess, burgundy as well as some blue. So I think it's just a really, really cool color. So, yeah, I knew I had to pick two of them up. I know they also came in a trio, but... Really, I was like, well, do you really want to spend an extra, I don't know, I think it was like $12 just to save $3? I don't know, not really. Yep, so I only picked up those two, but those two are my souvenirs from the Met. Next, we made an appointment at the Bite Beauty Lip Lab because the one in Toronto hasn't opened yet and I had seen throughout the years people just going to the one in New York, so I knew I had to go. So it's on Prince Street, which is basically, I guess, like Soho. Um, yeah, so our appointment was Sunday afternoon and I went in with an idea of what I wanted and I really wanted sort of a dark color that was similar to Tarte Frenemy, which is that lip paint that was just super patchy and actually quite disappointing, but I loved the color. So, let's see if I can get this out. So there they basically, they ask you if you have any ideas and then they just sort of start mixing colors together and then you can try it out and basically you can keep doing that until you find the color that you actually want. And what's nice about the Lip Lab is that they truly customize it in the sense that you can get whatever finish you want and whatever scent and even whatever shaped lid that you want on your tube uh, just because I guess they picked the most common lipstick shapes that women wear their lipsticks down to um, so I don't know I just picked this one because I have like a bunch of the other ones anyway so the color that I created is basically a really really dark deep red with a little bit of a brown undertone and so it's just a really nice vampy fall lip color and it's a matte finish of course just because I do prefer matte however they did tell me that it's more of a matte cream finish just because they don't do a super dry finish which is fine so stay tuned because I will be doing swatches of this as well as the lipstick that I'm going to show you next so here is a brand that is not readily available in Canada, and this is Lipstick Queen. And I chose one of the center lipsticks just because these ones are more opaque, whereas the, I think the alternative was the Saint ones. Either way, um, those ones are more sheer, and you know, sheer lipsticks, like what's the point? So I picked Natural Center, which is like sort of a more red-toned, like a muted red tone, maybe almost leaning berry sort of natural color. I don't know if you can see that there. Again, I will be doing swatches of this as well as my Bite lipstick on the blog. Um, this is actually a little bit reminiscent of the Charlotte Tilbury Bond Girl. However, I would say that this is leaning more towards brick red, like a muted brick red, whereas Bond Girl is definitely more berry. 
So that's about it in terms of beauty. Now we also went to Chelsea Market and there's a little sort of flea market set up there called Artists and Fleas. And I was walking by this table that had a whole bunch of soap on it. So of course like I immediately was intrigued because I'm definitely leaning more towards like natural skincare and so on. So this is called Soap for Sinners and I actually bought three bars of the same soap just because one of them I'm going to be giving um, as a gift. But I picked up the peppermint and coffee soap, which is really nice because it smells really pepperminty, but then like the coffee granules in there work to gently exfoliate your body, obviously. So yeah, I mean, I figured three of them just because the person I was buying it for, they really like coffee. I also bought them a bunch of New York coffee beans. So soap for sinners, you can follow them on Instagram. I did last night and um, yeah, so I can't wait to give this a try. Well, after going to the Bite Beauty Lip Lab, we decided to shop along Broadway. And the most exciting store that we went into, just because we don't have it here in Canada yet, is Uniqlo. Now, if you're not familiar with Uniqlo, it's basically like a Japanese Old Navy. However, the quality, I would say, is closer to, like, Gap. Um, just because it's got the discount prices, but it's not, like, super, super cheaply made um, or at least it doesn't feel like that so my friend Heidi had been before and I'd heard good things from other people so I picked up a few things just because they were super inexpensive and why not so in terms of their like basic like undershirts and whatnot line Heidi went for like their thermal one but because I don't really get too, too cold, I decided to go for their Airism line. So their Airism line is designed to be a really light layer to keep you cool. And so I picked up like two sort of like tank top undershirts. This is the Ultra Stretch Sleeveless Top from the Airism line, so I got white and black. I was contemplating getting like a nude color, but honestly, like anything nude color, first of all, it's not really nude nude because it's not the same skin tone for everybody, but I think it's just like the least appealing color in terms of clothing. Like, there's no way you can make it look stylish if you have, like, a nude sort of undershirt. Like, it just, it just, it just doesn't look great. So, yeah, black and white, I figured these were a good staple. These were only, yeah, $5.90. That's $5.90 each American. So, probably with the exchange, okay, maybe closer to 7 or $8 here, but either way, like, that's ridiculous. And, the quality apparently is fantastic, or, you know, when I felt them in store, they felt really nice. And apparently this is, you know, the qualities of Aerism is that they're absorbent and permeable. They release heat, they're dry, they're cool to the touch. And of course, because this is the ultra stretch, they're very, very stretchy. So yeah, definitely will be wearing these a lot, I'm sure. Also from Uniqlo, just because they're adorable, and sorry if this is like overshare, but I bought two pairs of underwear from their like boy shorts collection just because why not they come in cute little packages and they're you know adorably designed I just realized that like I'm covering my mouth with these as I'm trying to talk so yeah underwear always a you know always a necessity so yeah why not and the last thing I got at Uniqlo was also something that was on clearance and it is this awesome Andy Warhol Marilyn Monroe graphic tee and this was also only five dollars and ninety cents and it's from their SPRZNY collection I don't know if there's an actual like special way to say it but I'm not cool it says we call it SPRZNY a launching pad for products unlike any you have seen before and for mind-blowing innovations in pop culture the project centers on our Fifth Avenue NYC flagship store and will expand into Uniqlo stores everywhere, inspiring and surprising New York and the world. So, okay, yeah. So I think like mostly in this collection it featured a lot of like shirts and stuff that had, you know, artists' work and so on printed on it. So either way, um, yeah, I actually really quite like the Warhol Marilyn. I have a giant poster of it in my room and it's just a really you know iconic sort of piece so yeah for six bucks why not finally 
I can't go to the States and not go to Target. So on Monday morning, which was a busy day just because that night we went to the Jays and Yankees game, we went up to Marble Hill, which is, I guess, another part of New York, and we went up to the Target there just because, you know, we just had to go. So I picked up a few things at Target um, just because if you don't live in Canada, or you're unfamiliar with the situation here. Target came and then they left because it just was grossly unsuccessful, which is super sad, but anyway. So the first thing I picked up was in their dollar area, and it was just this pack of pencils. I mean, they're pretty basic, but they're six wooden pencils and then they have like painted tops, so, you know, it looks really pretty. This looks like something, you know, very Instagram, Tumblr-esque. So yeah, for a buck, why not? I love their dollar section or whatever they call it. So yeah, that was a good find. Also in the dollar section was this classroom calendar set, which is a dry erase. And it includes like the months as well as like a whole bunch of special day squares and also the number squares and so on. But because it's dry erase, I'll probably just end up writing the numbers on. But yeah, I figured this would be good for my classroom just because I think I recycled my old one just because it was getting really, really beaten up. So this is definitely useful. Also for my classroom, I picked up this world wall map, which is apparently huge. It's like 40 inches by 28. Um, so I think that's pretty big. But yeah, it's a giant world map. So you can't really go wrong with that. And this was only like $4. So yeah, and it says updated to include South Sudan. So that's helpful. I also picked up a couple pairs of underwear at Target just because, I don't know, clearly I was just in that sort of mindset where, you know, just want to get underwear. So I got this pair from, this is from their, I guess their house brand, which is Exhilaration. I just really like the design. And then the other one I got just because I thought it was cute, it is a pair of like R2D2 underwear. So that's just adorable and they were like five dollars so why not I mean this is why I love Target but it's also a dangerous place to shop because you're like yeah it's so cheap and then you get to checking out and then you immediately regret all of those decisions but not really okay the last two things I got at Target are food related products um, or you know they are food products I don't know, I'm having issues today. Um, so yeah, the first thing I got was a bag of the Keebler's Frosted Animal Cookies. And if you've never had these before, these are flippin' fantastic. Like, they're just like the regular animal crackers, but then they cover it in like this pink and white frosting and sprinkles. And I think the first time I had these were when they were at Menchie's. And then I found out that they're actually widely available in the States, so... It's been a few years since I've had them just because they didn't even sell it here when Target was here and it's only available in the US. So yeah, I'm going to definitely enjoy indulging in these. The last thing I got at Target was the Kodiak Cakes Flapjack and Waffle Mix and this is buttermilk and honey. And you just add water only. Now I know from personal experience of someone else making me buttermilk pancakes and such that Obviously, it's better to have, you know, made from scratch and fresh. But I picked this up because it's a whole grain pancake mix, and it's got, like, 8 grams of protein in a serving. And I had actually seen this a lot on different people's Instagram accounts, um, talking about, like, Weight Watcher Smart Points. I don't think I've mentioned it yet here, but if you know me and you know me well and you're in my life, you'll know that I actually joined Weight Watchers in January, and since then I've lost 35 pounds, so I've still got a ways to go, but I'm definitely feeling a lot better, and my health is a lot better, so it's just, it's been a really great journey. Summer has been tough just because it's summer and I'm out of routine and I'm eating tons of delicious delicious food and you know there's also someone in my life who keeps making me delicious food so um, it's been quite a bit of a balancing act over the summer to make sure that I go to the gym a lot just to sort of offset um, but I think it'll be easier definitely come September when I'm back in the work routine and it's just easier to stay on track that way. So yeah, Kodiak Cakes, I've seen through, you know, let's do shout outs. Shout outs to Tracking is the New Black. If you're on Weight Watchers or if you're just interested in seeing a lot of, you know, locale and, you know, good eats, um, Sophie of Tracking is the New Black is really great. I also follow Drizzle Me Skinny because I think she actually lives somewhere in Ontario. But 
I think she goes, I think she probably lives closer to the border just because she seems to be able to access like Kodiak cakes as well as other American, you know, Weight Watchers friendly food products a lot more frequently. But yeah, so I'm really excited to try this. This is the buttermilk and honey flavor. Apparently there's also a chocolate one, but they didn't have that one there. Otherwise I would have bought that too, um, which would have probably also made my carry on way too heavy, but whatever. Yeah, so that's basically it for my New York City haul. If you have any questions about any of the products I picked up, then obviously leave them down below. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I mean, I was pretty happy with myself. I stayed within budget. And yeah, I won't be going to the States for a little while just because I gotta recoup and save again, but I definitely need to go back to New York just because despite the ridiculous heat, uh, the food and the shopping is just, you can't even compare. So yeah, if you haven't seen my blog post already about all the different places that I ate at, then I will leave it linked down below so you can check that out because I am a beauty slash food blogger these days. So yeah, if you haven't seen that, check it out, drool a little bit, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe if you don't already, but you probably do, which is why you're seeing this. Bye.